Today we're going to talk about one of the biggest problems with film photographers, but I want to start this video with a story. You see, when I was a kid, I really enjoyed drawing. In fact, I loved it almost more than anything. It was one of my most favorite hobbies. And you see, I also loved sports cars. And my favorite car when I was a kid was a Ferrari 360. So I decided that I was gonna try to draw a Ferrari 360. The trouble was, I was 12 and I wasn't that great at drawing, but I had these big ambitions that I was gonna draw this really photorealistic car. I worked and worked and worked on the image, but at the end, unfortunately, it was jank. I'd suffered a lot to make that drawing, but I didn't really do a good job. I think sometimes, especially as film photographers, we have this tendency to feel as though we've suffered in some way for our art and that because we've suffered to make these images that that's somehow going to translate and make our images better. There have been cliches out there for years about suffering for our artwork and how that's a fallacy. Film photography can be incredibly difficult. You see I have a host of film cameras on my shelf back there and almost every single one of them is unique in the way that they operate. No two cameras back there are the same. When you get into film photography you're most likely going to be giving up a lot of the automatic functionality that you had in your normal digital cameras or, or your cell phone and you're going into a land where it's mostly manual focus, manual controls, sometimes even manual metering, compensating for things like reciprocity failure, and all these different calculations. The cameras provide almost no margin for error in nailing the shot. And to make matters worse, if you did make a mistake, you're not going to know about it until weeks later after you get the film back from getting it developed. As film photographers, we are definitely suffering. Getting to the main thrust of the video, I think it's really seductive for film photographers to think that because we've suffered, because we've went through all this, because we've, we've struggled to create our images that inherently makes them good. Think about all the different things that we talked about a second ago that went into creating the images. You've had to buy the camera, buy the lens, buy the film. Think about all the different elements that you control that go into creating the final images when you're creating a film image. You take the image, send it to the lab, pay more money, then finally get the image back. After going through all that, you would see why it's appealing to think your image is good. Like you, you've invested in this image, you've taken the time, you've really worked on it. Even without considering what you've taken an image of, you've had to do all of these different steps to create this image. Before we go too much farther though, I want to take a look at some Instagram hashtags just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So logging into my Instagram here, we're going to go up here to the search and take a look at some hashtags. So first, so I'm going to search for the Kodak Portrait 160 hashtag. We're going to take a look at that. So you can see washed out and you can get a look at some of these images. Now let's be clear, there's some very good images here that I'm looking at, but there is one cliche that I wanted to point out and I, unfortunately I fall victim to this as well all the time. But what is it with film? As soon as we put a roll of film in our camera, we think that we can only shoot old and dilapidated things. See, everything is old. A, a fuel pump, right? <laughs> But the images all look a certain way. Some of these even just look like snapshots, like that's just a family photo and that's on the main top of the hashtag, very strange. So now let's compare. Let's top in the Sony a7C and take a look at that hashtag and see what's on the digital front. And there's some really nice shots on here with the a7C. Uh, thirst trappy top stuff, we can see that. And you're gonna get that on Instagram from time to time. Not nearly as much old dilapidated stuff for whatever reason with the modern digital camera. In fact, I've not seen one gas pump. I don't know what's wrong. To me at least, the images are very, very different. It seems that film photographers for one are particularly susceptible to falling into the cliche of only photographing old buildings and old cars. I guess when you pick up an old camera, that's just what you do. You have to photograph something from 2500 BC. I feel like with digital cameras, people are more prone to take pictures of more modern things. I don't know why that is. But why is this happening? Why are the two image pools that different? To my eye, the film images were largely more subdued and more uninteresting than the digital images. Why is that? I think one thing that bears talking about is that with film photography, we are putting up some additional barriers between ourselves and creating a good shot. It's difficult. I think that we can all accept that. Film photography is largely more difficult than digital photography. Lots of us are out shooting with the Mamiya 645 or a Roloflex TLR or an Intrepid 4x5, right? These are very difficult cameras to use. So we have these barriers between us and creating a good shot. Did I focus properly? Did I meter properly? Did I input all my settings properly? Did I pick the right film? Did I time it properly? Did I account for reciprocity failure? The list goes on and on of the things that we have to account for personally to get a good image. So the problems that I see with film photographers are mainly, number one, falling victim to photography cliches such as only photographing old dilapidated things, or two, generally creating uninteresting, unremarkable images. I think these issues are particularly common among beginner photographers. When you're first getting into the hobby and you don't really know what you're doing, learning the system and learning how to work the camera in and of itself is a difficult thing. Trying to figure out how to use your camera and operate it properly, in addition to trying to create a really nice image, all that together, it's really hard. But for many of us, it was that fiddly, 
older antique film photography gear and that slow deliberate process that caused us to get into the hobby in the first place. It's easy for us to forget that at the end of all the song and dance that there is a job to do and that's to create a compelling image. And I feel like for some film photographers, that's an afterthought. It's the gear and the film and, and the settings and all the things that are the main goal and not actually creating the compelling final image. I think the problem with film photographers are we get too wrapped up in the gear and in the process and, and that can take away from our adventure. And the net result of that is that it does take away from our final output. I mean, it should come as no surprise, general photographic principles still apply. As compelling as you think that 7,000th selfie of your dear cap probably is, even if it was shot on Portra 400, probably no one cares. Creating great images still requires thought, creativity, imagination. Film is just the medium. And I know some of you guys are out there thinking, hey man, that's obvious. With many more steps standing between us film photographers and our final output, I think it's important to once in a while remember why we bought all this cool gear in the first place. And that's to create great images. But these are things that I have to remind myself and I'm sure that there's someone out there who needs to hear it too. Let me, fall, let me know in the comments if you fall victim to maybe becoming too focused on your gear or you fall victim to some of those film photography cliches. I know I have. If you really want to suffer for your art, I have the camera for you. Take a look at my intrepid 4x5 camera first impressions before you go. But as always guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you.